Well, Wuzzra here, and welcome back to the old school Iron Man. We've been chopping away U logs in between episodes, uh, got ourselves up to 75 wood cutting, which is pretty cool. If we look at our stack now, we're up to 4,300, and the actual amount of bird houses we need to get to 89 from our current XP is 4,432, but we're going to do some quests in between, and we're going to get that little extra XP uh, that we need, so we're pretty much done just 80 logs short and worst case scenario we can just use our excess magic logs to get us to 89 but i don't think that'll be a problem so now moving on we want to touch on some quests and a way to actually get our quest completed requires 43 prayer with 43 prayer we have access to all the protection spells and on old school the protection spells are 100 percent. so that means with 43 prayer we can basically block a single style at a time but getting 43 prayer is going to be a little bit of an adventure and we're going to do our best to actually train the skill as little as possible and use stuff like quests and diaries to get up to 43 with as little killing as needed. Before we get into all that prayer training, I want to show off what my new AFK is going to be now that we're done with the woodcutting. And when I say AFK, I mean very liberally. Uh, we're at the Motherlode Mine, which is located under Falador, and there's these ore veins here which give us pay dirt. Every time you mine a pay dirt, there's a 1 in 3 chance that the ore vein depletes, which is what makes it more AFK than regular mining, but still not very AFK. So it's more like a I'm watching YouTube sort of AFK versus a I'm working and doing something else. So I'm going to AFK mining. Pay dirt either at our mining level turns into coal or gold ore once we deposit it and run it through the water over here. So that means we end up with a lot more ores. Uh, we don't need to worry about banking really far away. This is basically just a godsend for Ironman because I can mine up to 70 and then I'll end up getting like 65 smithing banked, which is really nice. And there's our first mining level. Here there are two main ones to talk about. First is 72 mining. 72 mining is the requirement to get up to the upper floor of Motherload Mine, which is just so much better. And it's the highest mining requirement for a quest. So we're probably going to stick here for our AFK slash mindless time until we hit 72, uh, which will be quite a ways away, but uh, you got to do what you got to do. And while that's going on, we also want to get up to 60 smithing. So yeah. Let me eat my dinner, and then we'll get on to some prayer training. Merlin's Crystal quest is done. I forgot that this quest existed because on leagues it's automatically completed, so I, when I went to do the next quest, Holy Grail, I could just start Holy Grail right away. But turns out we had to actually do that one first. And now we AFK. Uh, we need to kill this Black Knight Titan. Uh, he has a lot of HP. And we don't hit very hard. I am using the Tome of Fire here because I feel like I'm not going to use the charges anyway. And as long as we have one charge in the book, it works for um, non-combat spells. So might as well use it for these early quests. The actual killing blow needs to come from Excalibur and you can't just mage it. Uh, so that's why I'm flinching it here. Oh, I went too early. So that's why I'm flinching it here. We just need to get one more hit with the Excalibur and then we can get away from here. There we go. And we got teleported to the other side, and we can now continue the quest. So we handed the Holy Grail back to King Arthur, and we got 11k prayer XP and 15k defense XP. That brought us up to 32 in both of them. I didn't plan that. But the good part about 32 prayer is that we're now over 30. So any sort of easy diary that we complete, we can uh, get a 2.5k XP lamp, which will get us closer to 43. Valley easy diary done. All the Karamja tasks are done. Now all we need to do are the Wildy tasks. But before we do that, we are going to do the Enter the Abyss mini quest. Because we need to actually get to the Abyss to be able to craft some water runes and earth runes. And the Enter the Abyss mini quest is going to get us the thousand experience we need as well. And we finished up the Abyss mini quest and got nine room crafting and the small pouch. I'm going to take a couple essence and go through the abyss a couple times. And the earth runes are crafted. Barak diary done. And the water runes. Going to finish off the lumbi diary. And all we need to do to finish off here is finish off the easy wilderness diary. 
And our last task is done. Let's go claim all these lamps. If we look at this, we got five of the easy diaries done, and we got five XP lamps out of it. So there's only two rewards worth talking about here, and the first one's from the Kromja Gloves, where we get better deals in shops on Kromja when worn. This includes toggle and trading sticks, so for those alternate currencies, it's very, very important. It uh, really cheapens the cost of an Onyx because we basically, most of the time, will be buying an Onyx with 29k Chaos Runes. So that's uh, a big save there. And then the Wilderness Sword one lets us choose the location on the levers that we take so we can choose Arty or Edgel. Very small quality of life thing, but it's something at least. But let's use these lamps on prayer. They all give 2.5k XP, except for this red one, which is from the Karavja Diary, which only gives 1k. And that's because the Karavja Diary was actually out before um, Old School came out, and all the other diaries were added much later. But with that 11k XP gained, we got up to level 37, which means we can actually use the Protect from Magic spell, and we just need to gain 6 more levels to get up to 43. So now if we look at the amount of experience we have to go till 43, we can see that we need 78 Dragon Bones. Um, so that's going to be a, quite a grind, but we're going to be able to finish that off. So this is going to be our life for the next little bit. We need about 75 Bones, so this is going to be our little safe spot if we mark this tile just to be secure. If, as long as we don't go beyond this line, the Blue Dragon doesn't moonwalk, and we can pick up the Bones and then come back here and wait for the spawn. So that's one kill down, 75 more to go. And that is our 78th dragon bone, so we can get the hell out of here. I also picked up three of these in soul dragon heads, and they give a lot of experience, like 1,500 each. Uh, but I need to have Arceus favor to be able to actually use them, so they're just going to sit in the bank. Now, I know that I can use the Wilderness Chaos Altar. I just don't trust myself yet with the gear I have and... Um, just my low prayer level, I barely have protect from magic, that I just don't trust myself to not die at the Chaos Altar, even though it means I only needed half as many bones. But this way I don't need to worry about getting PK'd, and if I can avoid the Wilderness, I'd rather avoid the Wilderness. So the plan is to buy nine buckets of slime each inventory at this charter ship and then uh, walk out to the Ectophantus and grind up the bones. And here is going to be level 43 prayer. No, it's not, because there's one more inventory. And this inventory is going to be 43 prayer. Oh, so good. We now can use the Protect from Melee spell. So we have access to Protect from Melee, Protect from Missiles, and Protect from Magic. On RS3, they only block 50%, so while they're helpful, they're not as big a deal. So any sort of like quest boss, as long as I have prayer points and they only use one style, I should be unable to die and will be able to go through it. At least for like the mid-level quests, some of the high-level quests are actually kind of difficult, like Dragon Slayer 2 or Song of the Elves. So that'll be an issue when we get there, but that is quite a ways off. So these these prayers are just so important to getting through the, I guess, early mid-game, we'll call it. But it's time to quest now. And the first quest we want to get done is Monkey Madness. It's a very long quest, but it gives us the ability to buy a Dragon Scimitar, which we're going to want to do um, when we get up to 60 attack, as it's going to be our best weapon until we get the Abyssal Whip at 85 Slayer, which is going to take like a year to get. Time to do the boss fight of Monkey Madness. This is basically the reason why we got a 43 prayer. Um, so we could get not only through this quest, but also through the tough parts of this. So he's going to attack us with uh, Mage as long as we're out of MD. And the Gnomes also attack him. Uh, and I'm using the Fire Blast spell here with the Tome of Fire. So our max hit is quite high, so this should be pretty quick. If you're really low level, you can like hang out on these outer rocks and let the Gnomes bring them down. Uh, but you have to be the person who does the final hit. So it can be a little spooky if you don't have 37 magic. We just need a hit. This should do it. This should be the final hit. And boom, Jungle Demon is defeated. And Monkey Madness is done. Uh, big thing is we get the access to Apatol, as that's going to give us the ability to buy and wield a Dragon Scimitar. We also got Dario's training, which we're going to go do now because it's going to get us a lot of combat XP. 
So we get two options here. We can either focus on strength and stamina or attack and defense. And whichever one we pick, we get 35k in and the others get 20k in. So we're going to go for attack and defense because we already have a relatively high strength level. And HP XP is very unimportant because you naturally get that just from killing things. So we're going for attack and defense. And look at that XP drop. Ooh. Levels wise, we got to 42 HP, 49 attack, 43 defense. We didn't gain a strength level, uh, but our total level is now above 1225 at 1227. Pretty cool. And on the island, there is this beautiful dragon scimitar. Costs 100k, but it's going to be our main weapon once we get up to 60 attack. And it's just so good to look at in the inventory, and I can't wait to equip it, but we gotta gain 11 more attack levels first. So we prepped our magic last episode with MTA, and we've kind of set ourselves up for melee with the Dragon Scimitar once we get the 60 attack, but our range is lacking. And one of the first items you get when you're ranging is the accumulator or the Ava's devices. These save a ton of your ammo. It's like 70% to 80% depending on what tier you have. So it's very important, especially on an Iron Man where ammo is going to be pretty limited. But the problem is we need 30 ranged and 18 Slayer to do this quest. Two levels we don't have. And if Old School has taught me anything yet, it's that when you're a low level, you don't actually train the skills, you just do quests. So we're going to work our way through a bunch of quests to get our ranged up to 30 and our Slayer up to 18. Let's get it. So we finished this bar crawl back in episode one before we went to Winterdot, and I just never turned it in. Not only does it give us access to this area, but also we get the ability for barbarian vial drinking. Basically what it means is when we drink a potion, it'll destroy the empty vial instead of leaving it in our inventory, which is really nice for PVM because really annoying to uh, have to drop vials every time you're done with the potion. And horror from the deep done, 4k strength, 4k ranged, and 4k magic. Got us up to level 20. Very nice. And the golem is done. Nothing really major, but it's one of the requirements for Shadow of the Storm. That was freaking close. We had 3 HP left. Uh, we're going to get 10,000 range experience. And that's going to get us up to level 30, which was the level we needed. I actually killed him two times already with Silverlight. But what happened was I was flinching him on this square. And where Patrick is standing is where the boss was, right here. Let me just mark the tile. Um, so I'd run here, and then I'd attack. And then I'd run back before he could hit me. But if you're behind this area, the game doesn't think you hit it with Silverlight. So I did that twice. And then the third one, I finally just decided to tank a hit as soon as I got an XP drop. And luckily, we killed him in time. But with range out of the way, it's time to work on Slayer. And again, we're going to quest for that. It's actually a free-to-play quest. Uh, no, it's not a free-to-play quest, what am I thinking? It's Slayer. Um, but it's a early game quest that they recently added in Old School. A poor scene of interest. It's, uh, like, supposed to be, like, the tutorial for Slayer. Got us to level 16. Oh, I couldn't, I can't math well. Uh, turns out we're actually gonna have to go up to level 18. And it works out just perfectly that these 26 cave crawlers is gonna get us, like, 50 XP above level 18. Thank you for the good tasks, Bria. And there is 18 Slayer. We got two more Cave Crawlers to do. Might as well do them while we're up here. And then we can prep for Animal Magnetism. Animal Magnetism is done, and we got an Ava's device. And because we're at the a low range level right now, it actually is only an Ava's attractor. Uh, but if we go to devices here, we can see that there's three tiers of them. Ava attractor is the first one. You get Ava's accumulator at level 50, and then Ava's assembly you get after Dragon Slayer 2. This one saves 60% of ammo, 20% gets broken, and 20% goes to the ground. The accumulator saves 72% of ammo, and the assembler saves 80% of ammo. But the blanket 20% breaking happens regardless of whether you have any Ava's devices on. Now we're almost done, and we have one more quest to go, and it's the Lost Tribe. This gives us a nice range weapon that we're going to be using to train up our range. So let's get it. That's messed up. So on this quest, we have to talk to like six people. And one of them has the correct answer of what happened in the basement. But the uh, 
Quest Over just told me right away which one it was. I guess they can like know the entity that is correct, which is so crazy to me. Such an OP plugin, but I've done these quests, I want to say like 15 to 20 times between League accounts, between um, all the various accounts I've made over the years. So at least if it's an old quest, I'm probably going to keep using uh, the quest helper because I can't be asked. The one thing you want to do once you have the Ava's devices is that you want to toggle your ammo to equip when you pick it up, please. Uh, you want to have it automatically equipped so that it doesn't clog up your inventory and talking to the range tutor in Lumbridge does that. So if I'm firing bronze arrows and my accumulator picks up bronze arrows, it'll just put it in my ammo slot instead of the inventory. Just a nice little quality of life thing. The Lost Tribe done. Uh, not much for the actual rewards, but uh, one of the things we do get is we're now able to buy a certain crossbow. If we trade with Nardok here, we can buy a Dorgashan crossbow for 2,000 GP, and then each one of these uh, bolt packs are 350 each. And despite these being bone bolts, they actually do work with Ava's devices, so uh, each one we fire, we save 60% of them. But now we've done all the quests we wanted to do, we've set ourselves up the training range, training melees, and we already have our magic. But before we fully invest into combat training, I want to get smithing up to level 40 so that I can smelt gold ore and make some uh, jewelry. And perfectly mathed out, there is level 40 smithing. We can now smelt gold ores and make steel battle axes, but we really only care about the gold ores. Now I'm going to go ahead and make these darts. I have this plug in turned on. Uh, which makes it very hard to drag items unless you've been holding the item for quite a while. So if you see I drag the iron plate button, it doesn't move. So that's great for fletching training because it's just like how quickly can you click between the two of them. And I always mistakenly drag the bolt so I can just spam click here and get some nice fletching training. Time to do a little bit of XP waste. We could do the family crest quest so that we would get 56 XP per bar here instead of 23. Uh, but I don't want to get those gauntlets just yet. So we're going to make one ruby amulet here. And then the rest of these, we're going to make ruby necklaces. And I'll get to what those effects are when we enchant them. So the ruby amulet becomes an amulet of strength, which is going to be our best amulet for quite a while because we're going to be killing a lot of low defense creatures. And the 10 melee strength bonus is 2 to 3 max hit. So massive increase in dps in the lower stages now these dig site pendants are very very good for us because getting to fossil island is a bitch and a half uh, but with each one of these we get five teleports to fossil island so it's going to be conceivably so much quicker to do birdhouse runs and or get to the fossil island for anything else just one quick teleport and we're right there so when we rub the dig site pendant, it takes us right here, a little closer than where the glider used to take us, but we can make this even more convenient on Fossil Island. The house on the hill, which is near the center of the Fossil Island, there is this little strange machine here with the dig site symbol, and if you use the amulet on it, we can now rub and teleport right to Fossil Island, which teleports us right here, and then we can go use this magic mush tree to take us to our birdhouse locations. One of the last items we want to get is super attack potions, which require 45 herblar. We have just enough potions. We're going to be about 2k experience away, so after 20 super attacks, uh, we'll uh, be able to uh, make them without boosting. So I think I'll only need like 3 or 4 beers at most. And 45 herblar, no more boosting for super attacks. So when we're done with all of our potions, we got up to 128 super attacks and 194 energy potions, which will be really nice in the short term. We have one last thing we need to do before we're ready to just grind out some combat XP, and that's get some gear. So this is going to be our life for the next little while. We have our Chav set up on with our Mithril, our Rune Scimitar. We've got Steel Gloves, as those are the best gloves we can get with our current RFD chest progress. We'd have to do two more quests to get black gloves, and I just deemed it not to be worth it at this stage. So our plans for training is we're going to get attack up to level 60, and then we can use the dragon scimitar. And once we have the dragon scimitar, we're going to be getting our attack all the way up to level 70. 
And then strength we're probably not going to touch because we can just gain that once we have 70 attack. We can just budget ourselves all on strength. And then for defense, we're going to go up all the way to 70, which seems like overkill. But it just means that we have literally basically no reason to train defense until very late game. It means I can just focus on uh, strength training for the longest time without worrying about like defense lagging behind too far. I missed it, but 60 attack. Let's go get our dragon scimitar. And in celebration, we get to elk our rune scimitar. 15k, we got back. So two things are going to be different with the dragon scimitar. First off, we're going to get our strength up to level 75, because that actually gives us a max hit. Uh, it puts our max hit up to 20, instead of the 19 that it currently is. And we're also not going to use attack potions anymore, because with the dragon scimitar, we have like 98% accuracy and an attack potion only makes it like 98.2. So we don't need to worry about drinking attack potions to make us more accurate here. And we can just save the potions. I got 75 strength and didn't even realize. Uh, but now we're going to be training attack all the way through um, up until 70. It seems like I was getting 45k XP per hour now that we have the dragon scimitar. I probably would get more XP per hour if I went to one of the three ammonite spawns. As there seems to be a bit of a like idle time after each death but i honestly can't be asked competing for those spots and i'd rather take the slightly less xp per hour and not have to deal with uh getting crashed every 13 minutes 70 attack has been obtained this means we can swap over to defense training now uh, uh so i just got a loop half of a key and I looked it up. It's a 1 in 16.4k drop. Absolutely insane. So there we are. 70 defense. We got our attack up to 70. And now our defense is up to 70. But we have one more grind left to get. We're going to get our ranged up to level 60. I decided 60 instead of 70. One, because it's really slow to train range in comparison. Because my gear just isn't as good for range. And two, that's the highest quest requirement for range. So I thought that's a good natural stopping point. I chose 70 as the defense level as pretty much everything uh, that we're going to be wearing in the short term has a maximum level of 70. The only thing that has 75 or, or 80 are pretty late game stuff like I need 91 Slayer for this. Going to need a lot to go to Zolra. 75 Slayer for the Guardian Boots, and Justice Shear is from Theater of Blood, and Ferocious Gloves are from Hydra, so we just don't need to worry about our defense levels for equipping stuff like I scoured the bank, and this is the best setup we have. So our range strength is up to 49, and our range attack is 66. It should give us moderate DPS, but it's not going to be pretty in comparison with the Dragon Scimitar we had before. And especially because our range level is 30, we're going to be splashing a hell of a lot in the beginning and our max hit isn't going to be too high. Now, ammo wise, we're going to save 60% and it's going to go right back into the uh, ammo slot. 20% is going to go to the ground and then the other 20% is just going to break and can't be recovered. Uh, I'm not going to worry about picking up the bolts off the ground. The 3000 we have should last us. There is level 50 ranged. Originally, I was going to go all the way up to level 60, but I decided to stop at level 50. Uh, essentially, because at 50, you unlock the magic short bow, and I'm probably going to be doing some clues, maybe some mediums, hards in the short future, so I can pick up a magic short bow that way, and then this will be a little bit faster. And if I really need range levels for anything, I can always just come back here and plop myself down. It's not like I'm missing out on a lot by leaving here a little early. We don't need the level for anything in the short term. In terms of the drops, we killed 3,100 Ammonite Crabs. I'll put the drops on screen here. Uh, but the main thing to note from them is these seaweed spores. We got a total of 58. I probably missed a couple um, just because of how AFK it is and probably only picked up 50 of them. Uh, but each spore turns into about, I want to say, 20-ish giant seaweed so that means we get more giant seaweed and we're banking some spores i did a lot of birdhouse runs and seaweed runs while i was here um so we got from 61 i think to 63 hunter and we can go do one last birdhouse run and seaweed run and the final seaweed tally was 684 with 23 extra seeds
And we picked up a Hispori seed while farming that patch, which is a very good segue. Because now that we have some melee combats, we're actually going to go try to attempt to kill Hispori. So in the farming guild, there's this cave where you can kill the Hispori, which is basically like a farming tree you grow. Um, I have my Chad set up that I was using to melee train it. It attacks with mage and ranged, and our ranged defense is pretty good. Uh, what is that, 101? And so I'm just going to mage protect for the entire kill. And I'll probably put on steel skin and ultimate strength. Hopefully we can get it on this rotation. We just need a couple of big hits here. Oh, that 17 is big. 14! One more hit. Oh, we got our first Hispori kill. Let's see how long this is. 251. So once you've killed it, you can clear it. So let's see what we get. Okay, that's actually really good. Uh, the white lily seeds, because there's a white lily contract, and this is the only way to, for us to get the white lily seeds. Um, so that's really good. On top of that, they always drop an anima seed, which goes in this anima patch here. But all three of the anima seeds require 76 farming, and this ISR ones decreases the chance of disease. And they're special uh, plants that when they reach full health, instead of like sitting here where you can check the health, or they give you more produce, they automatically wither away once they've been fully grown. And the Hispori has a 1 in 35 chance to drop the bottomless compost bucket, which is very good for Iron Man because it essentially doubles all your compost, as for each compost you put into it, you get two compost charges out of it. So that's going to be a very big thing for us to get uh, pretty early on, hopefully long before... Uh, some high farming levels but that's going to do it for this episode of the old school iron man if you enjoyed the episode i'd really appreciate it if you dropped a like down below and subscribe for future episodes next episode we're going to be leveraging our new found combat strength and try to complete a lot of uh, intermediate goals for the long-term health of the account have a good day and i'll catch you in the next one